Hello YouTube and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video we are going to be answering a daft question I've had floating around in my head and that question is what would happen if you just fitted the highest KV motor you can get your hands on in a brushless buggy or truck or whatever it is what would happen if you only put a really high KV motor in it and didn't change anything else just change the motor would you get any performance benefits or would it be completely unusable i.e loads of cogging so that is precisely the purpose of this video i've got hold of a 5900 kv motor off banggood i'll put a link in the description uh, and we're going to shove it in hopefully our hbx 901a here now the hbx has a 3800 kv motor with a 35 amp esc so it, basically i'm just i'm just interested to see if you were if you just changed the motor to a higher kv motor didn't change anything else what performance uh, if any advantage would you gain and uh, what would the drivability of the rc be like now before we rip the motor out of this thing we need to find out exactly how fast it is uh, stock uh, it's going to be running 2s with the standard motor which is a 3800 kv so anyway enough waffle uh, let's go and try it and see what top speed it does from stock Okay then, that's the speedo attached to the back of the HBX. Let's see what the stock uh, speed of this thing is. Right then, the top speed of the stock HBX 901A uh, is 25.1 miles an hour. Uh, let's stick that to high KV motor in it uh, and see what we get. Okay then, so the stock truck does 25.1 miles an hour. Uh, let's stick the high KV motor in and see if we can't beat it. Um, getting the motor out of these things is a fairly straightforward operation. The only thing that's worrying me is getting the motor pinion off, which if, if they use the same glue as WL Toys, could be an absolute ball ache. Anyway, uh, let's get the lid off and uh, let's get that motor out. Right then, this is where we're at. Uh, what was I saying about the motor should be easy to get out? <laughs> well, it comes out, it flies out of the car, dead easy. But trying to get it out of this plastic carry here is an absolute piggy nightmare. The um, heat sink uh, on the motor, uh, they've bonded it on. So you can't actually take the heat sink off to slide uh, the motor out of this plastic carriage. You have to literally use brute force to get it out. I was that worried about breaking it. Anyway, um, as usual, uh, from the factory, they've rounded the grub screw off, so I can't get the grub screw out of the motor pinion. Um, I've tried a bit of heat, um, no joy. I've actually got a little pinion puller that I bought off AliExpress, which I'm going to try and use to pull the pinion off. So if I can release the tension on that grub screw, hopefully I'll be able to unscrew it. Um, but it's going to be a very short video if I can't get this pinion off. Anyway. I'll carry on. Right then, that's the new motor back in the plastic carrier. What a palaver that was. Thank God I bought this uh, little pinion gear puller. I will put a link in the description to it. Actually, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, so I've Loctited the motor into the plastic carrier. I've Loctited the new pinion onto the shaft. Just waiting for that to go off. Then I'm going to bolt it in. Um, and we're going to try it. If this is successful, then at some point I'm going to replace the little radiator on top here. Um, but I can't use the original because, like I say, they bond them onto the motor. You just cannot get it off. Okay, the motor's back in. All I've got to do is put the little gear cover on. Uh, let's just quickly give it a test. Um, see if it feels any quicker. It's not very scientific, I know, but um, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It does feel a bit quicker. Anyway, let's go and try it. Right, I've done a couple more passes and it seems 34.4 miles an hour is its top speed. The battery's going a bit flat now, so uh, I don't think I'm going to get any more out of it, but got to be happy with that. That's got to be a result. Right then, back inside, what do we think of our Surpass Hobby 5900 kV motor swap? Uh, well, the results speak for themselves, really. Uh, stock motor, 25 mile an hour. Uh, Surpass Hobby 5900 kV motor. 
34 miles an hour. Um, we almost got 10 mile an hour quicker. Um, I was I would have been happy with five miles an hour to be honest with you, uh, but almost 10 miles an hour out of what cost me eight pound fifty. Well, that's about eleven and a half dollars. I think it's absolutely amazing. I'm gobsmacked. It works so well. Uh, good and bad points. Uh, that motor does get quite hot. Um, I'm think I'm going to have to reinstate some sort of radiator help keep it cool. Um, also, towards the end of the video. Uh, I think the thermal cutout uh, cut in on the ESC, so it did stop, but as soon as it cooled down, started again. Um, that's the only really bad points I can think of. Uh, the thing I was worried most about was the cogging, and that was non-existent. It is as smooth, if not smoother, than the original motor, so uh, from that standpoint, not a problem. And considering the price of the motor, you really do get some bang for your buck, I tell you. It did take me a little while to get the pinion off, uh, and if you haven't, I would seriously consider getting yourself a little pinion puller, because this, this thing just saved my life. Now, would I recommend fitting a Surpass Hobby 5900 KV motor to your HBX 901A? Absolutely. I mean, it's super cheap and the results you get are instant and frankly amazing. As ever I will leave a link in the description where you can get one of these little motors from. I think they are on a sale, not on a flash deal, but I think they're on a sale at the moment. So uh, get them while you're hot. They do do a selection of different KVs as well. So if you didn't if you didn't want the 5900 one, I think they do like two, two, 2200, 3400. There's a, there's a definite range of different ones. Anyway, if you found this video of some use and interest, uh, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're feeling that way inclined, hit that subscribe button for more similar future content. Now, talking of similar future content, we have got one of these to fit, and I'm debating whether to fit it to the Flyhal FC610 or the Flyhal X03, X04. So um, stay tuned.